Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webcast, Top Accounts Payable Remedies for When AP Automation Does Not Relieve the Pain. We're excited to have you all on board, and we appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedules to be with us today. My name is Anne-Marie Cochia, Director of Marketing here at Canon Business Process Services, and I'll be your moderator for today's webcast. Before we get started, I do have a few quick housekeeping notes. To eliminate background noise, all participants have been muted. You will only be able to hear our presenter speak. If you'd like to ask a question, you may do so at any time by clicking on the Q&A button on the WebEx dashboard on the right side of your screen. Type your question and click send, and we'll try to address your question before the end of today's webcast. Because we only have a limited time, we apologize in advance if we are unable to address your question online. We'll be sure to follow up on any unanswered questions after the webcast. Lastly, we will be sharing an archive version of today's webcast as well as the deck with all of you after the session is complete today. Today's session, we're going to discuss the state of accounts payable, why accounts payable automation does not always deliver, Top Accounts Payable Remedies. We're going to also cover a few case studies on our experience, as well as uh, give you some takeaways for today. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our esteemed panelists for today. Ted Ardelian has over 25 years of experience working with clients on improving their business processes. He has presented at industry conferences and written numerous articles on a wide range of business process outsourcing topics. He has a great deal of expertise in achieving accounts payable goals and improving business processes for clients. Ted, we're so glad to have you on board today, and we thank you for carving out this time to share your expertise. Glad to be here, Anne-Marie, and thank you for that. And I'm uh, happy to have everybody online Thank you for taking the time. We are glad to share anything we can with you uh, based on our experience. And with that, I'd like to uh, begin the uh, webcast. First, um, let me just say a word for those who may not be familiar with Canon Business Process Services about who we are. We're, we are a service provider. Our history has been document process outsourcing or DPO in short, which meant managing imaging, records, print, mail services, office services for companies on site. However, in the past five years or so, uh, clients have been taking us into business process outsourcing services. And within that, we provide accounts payable outsourcing services, claims process outsourcing, we process uh, student financial aid, we process uh, foreign transactions, uh, foreign um, foreign trade finance, of all kinds of business processes behind the scenes that organizations use. We also provide e-discovery services, and that includes everything from physical collection of documents to digital collection to consulting and uh, technology provisioning to execute your electronic discovery project. We have about 4,000 people here in the U.S. and, and uh, in Canada. And we also have a sister company in Europe who does pretty much the same. Uh, over the past eight, nine years or so, the IAOP has recognized or has ranked our services, our company, as a, one of the top 100 uh, outsourcing services providers. So with that, let me move on to the uh, to today's discussion um, and, and just start by kind of reminding us uh, about the state of accounts payable. Last uh, year, late last year, we did a survey with IOFM to kind of gauge the state of accounts payable. And um, no surprises there, I guess. Um, we have seen this before in, in uh, other surveys as well. Paper is has still remains as the big enemy within AP because it just takes so much time to process. Technology can help, and of course, it is extremely helpful 
and we'll discuss uh, that um, later on. 83% of invoices arrive in paper or paper equivalent uh, formats, which means that requires manual conversion from that format from paper or PDF into ERP formatted data. And that uh, takes time, takes technology, takes effort, takes know-how. Uh, only 20% of organizations are using automated data caption and OCR technology to digitize the paper invoice, which was somewhat of a, of a surprise because we, at the same time, we are seeing companies accept, talk about, adapt more and more scanning, but um, is sometimes they are not necessarily applying the scanning capabilities or the OCR capabilities as much as they could or they should. So again, manual invoices um, is, is a pain and, and it uh, requires a lot of effort. Straight through processing is limited. Um, only about 25% of invoices are processed straight through, straight through according to 80% of the organizations that participated in the survey. So the bottom line is that um, activities that cause the most pain still within AP process are invoice receipt and data entry, invoice approval and routing, and invoice matching. This study is available on our website and I believe we will send it to you with the deck um, following the webcast. Uh, but if you like, you can go and download it directly. Okay, so now we've reached our first poll question and we'd like to hear from you. The question is, have you worked in an AP department where technology was not used to its potential or not fully implemented? If you could just uh, tally up your answer on the right, just select an answer and, and um, we'd love to hear from you. We'll take a minute or two, a few seconds here. We're still computing. Are we done? Okay, so we have 81% uh, of our audience says yes. So that's uh, not a surprise. Um, maybe that's an indication of participation, high participation and, and uh, from people in this webcast and uh, higher participation among um, managers and directors and controllers than in some of the other webcasts that uh, we've done. So um, it's, 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 it's a pain um, and we're going to discuss some remedies as to what um, typically uh, can be done to, to help alleviate some of that. So technology is really important in today's, in today's AP process. We probably can't do without it, uh, but sometimes it does not perform to our expectations as we just uh, confirmed with this poll question. So what are some of the reasons why this is happening? One on this slide, what I wanted to, to share with you is some, um, some of those reasons. Of course, there could be many, many others, uh, but for the most part, what I've done here is um, categorize these reasons or these situations in three, three buckets, if you will, or three categories. And the first one being the invoice intake phase is not optimized. And what we mean by that is that Invoices typically are not received uh, by the AP department first. Uh, they go to buyers. They go to the people who have placed the orders. And that, as you know, is a big problem because that leaves the AP function um, out of control. You don't have control of an invoice that uh, came in and needs to be processed. And Scanning um, does not use OCR um, is another issue or problem we see with many companies where we ask them, are you scanning invoices? Yes. Are you uh, extracting data? Yes. But when we actually go in and, and work with them to see, well, what is the problem? What's going on? We often discover that they are not truly uh, using the OCR engine, or if they are, the OCR engine is not capable of 
uh, reading the, the uh, text and the invoice um, as well as it should. It hasn't been trained. It may not have the, the right capabilities and functionality to do the job for the profile of the invoices that this company is receiving. There may be handoffs between scanning and the ERP systems where basically you are tra transitioning the data or, or sending the data and rather than doing it in an automatic connected way, you are basically exporting spreadsheets and then importing spreadsheets and then you have all kinds of data issues. The next category involves technical issues and disconnect between digital systems. And here what we mean is that we, what we see with, with many organizations is that they may not have all the ecosystems or all the systems working as an ecosystem together. So you, you have the scanning process and, and even if you're extracting data, uh, you may not be connecting to uh, the receiving system so that you could take advantage of um, getting the, you know, doing the, the, the matching uh, automatically between the receiving system and, and the accounting system. Um, you have procurement systems where you are handling the PO, the PO invoices, for example, but not the non-PO system, not the, not the non-PO invoices. Um, you may not have, or organizations may not have business rules set up to validate um, the, and verify the data and the information uh, on the invoice. And in many ways, in general, many of the capabilities that are available in a system that a, a client may have are just not used. Sometimes there is workflow within ERP, but it is not being used or it's being used with limited um, capability or functionality. The other category of issues that we see um, that interfere with why technology may not be delivering um, the performance and, and the capabilities that it was expected is the process itself. Um, there may be high turnover within an AP function and um, organizations are consumed with um, a training staff and, and dealing with staff turnover issues that they're not getting the productivity out of the functionality in the technology. Another uh, problem could uh, be the result of lack of SLAs and accountabilities. Um, frankly, when we go into clients or prospects, we discover that they are not managing the AP function or operation by the numbers. Um, you know, how many invoices were scanned today, how many were entered into uh, workflow, how many were rejected, how many were duplicates, uh, what is the pattern of, of invoice a volume, you know, does it vary week to week? Does it vary different days of the week? Does it vary uh, by seasonality and things like that? And that translates into staffing requirements and, and, and back queues and things like that that need to be addressed. Sometimes there is no coordination or little coordination between the AP function in procurement and as we all know um, if procurement is doing things um, on their own and we're not aware of, they may be doing things that cause a lot of work for uh, the AP function down the line and uh, cause discrepancies and a lot of rework. So those are some of the uh, situations that we typically um, encounter. So as a service provider for AP processing, we met many in, in all of these um, client situations. What are some of the uh, practical remedies that um, sometimes we use to um, help clients improve the performance of the AP function overall, improve the use of their technology that they have, or uh, perhaps work with them to enhance 
the existing technology. Rarely do we find clients or organizations, especially large and mid-sized and large organizations that have nothing, no technology. Um, most organizations have something. The challenge is, is making it all work as efficiently as possible. So one, one step um, is, is an assessment, an AP assessment, and basically here we're going back to the basics. Because we are new to the organization, or to the client, we don't know the history and everything else. We prefer that we start with an assessment to get a, a baseline of what the situation is, to verify, validate the actual data, the actual numbers, what's happening, um, and not just the, and, and not assume anything. So we have a process for for going about doing that. It's also a best practice uh, and an executive requirement because if you are looking at making any changes, you know, um, whether it's changing the, a pro the process, whether it's uh, adding or enhancing technology, you need management or executive buy-in. And one of the first questions is going to be, well, why? Why do you, want, why do you propose this? And, and where are you going with this? And how do you know that things are working fine? Um, I'm not sure that I see the need for, ex, you know, additional expense or, or change. So if you, have a, if you have an assessment report, then you can say, well, you know what? here's what we found out, here's the actual situation, and this is why we need to do this, then uh, you're likely to have more success uh, in uh, getting that approved. But um, the assessment also gives you a historical understanding of performance, uh, forces you to define your future goals and objectives where you want to go. It forces you to look at not only the AP process and activities, but expand your horizon by looking at, say, procurement process, looking at the changes that need to be implemented, whether that is staffing, process, technology. And, uh, you know, in the end, it also helps you ensure that the right solution and changes are going to be selected and implemented as opposed to uh, guessing as to what that solution or might be. So how is the, in, uh, the assessment done? Typically, it involves a live quantitative, qualitative uh, uh, study. Uh, it involves meeting with key stakeholders. The analysis or the assessment should be done by experienced analysts. Um, our analysts are typically um, CPAs with the finance and accounting backgrounds, with AP operational experience, with technology implementation experience, and we also have assisting them Six Sigma process excellence uh, people, black belt and, and so on, and change management people who are there to work with them to plan the entire um, a change or project that may be needed to uh, be executed. And of course, um, you do the assessment with management assist, uh, approval. Some of the tools that, um, some of the tools that uh, we um, typically use in doing the assessment is um, a questionnaire, interviews, uh, as I mentioned, process mapping being done by um, Six Sigma fo uh, folks usually. We do what-if modeling to, you know, to, to kind of estimate or forecast or gauge different outcomes by taking different paths. Uh, and of course, this requires uh, report writing and so on. The uh, value, the value that uh, Excuse me, Ted, you know, we do have a writing question here. Let's uh, take a minute and, and see if we can address the question. Uh, the question reads, for the AP assessment, what does the assessment produce and, and what do we get? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, perhaps I should have had a bullet on this, but um, 
The outputs that typically result from the assessment include things like a report, I mean, basically a report, which includes things like um, what uh, are the goals, what are the actual numbers that were discovered in the discovery phase, of course, the results from the questionnaire uh, that we've, um, you know, collected from um, the users that are out there, both from AP but also from non-AP users. It may include a project plan um, with a timeline to give you a, a sense of or to give us a sense of, you know, how long it will take. Uh, it may include prior prioritization of um, of the um, improvements that need to be done. Sometimes um, to achieve the ultimate goal, you may have to take intermediate steps first to get that out of the way and prep the ground for the um, more substantial or larger project. And of course, um, it may the output should include or it may include um, a process map which kind of outlines outlines the entire AP process and the entire invoice workflow, the path through which the invoice moves from the beginning all the way to when it gets paid. And one interesting discovery is from that um, is, is uncovering all the workarounds uh, that typically exist that perhaps uh, management might not be aware of in terms of what it takes to actually get the invoice process completely from end to end and, and some of the, the workarounds that may be implemented or may have been implemented by the staff in order to get the invoice through. So that's kind of some of the input. So let me conclude this slide by talking quickly about the value why you, you know, what is the value of, of an assessment? And the value is you probably, your, your, your probability of success is going to be higher. And the reason for that is because you have done your homework to study and understand what the situation is, what the problems are, what technologies you have, you may not have, uh, what the gaps between what you expect and where you are, are, and again, you know, you sort of have a roadmap about how you're going to go about doing the improvements or what improvements you need to make. It's faster or, or your entire project is going to be faster or executed faster from beginning to end because you are putting your thinking together and um, discovering all the routes that you can take to your end goal or your objectives, and um, then you can pick sort of the best route uh, that, um, that's available to you. And if you know that in advance, then chances are your, your, your timeline is going to be shorter because if you don't do the ass assessment and you jump into um, a, a solution or um, a, a remedy, that you think is the answer to your problem, and then you down, you know, halfway down uh, the path, you may discover that, oh, I forgot this, or we overlooked that, or we didn't understand that. Then you may need to backtrack and, and fix that, and then start all over. And frankly, the other reason you you do an assessment is the assessment will bring forth to you or uncover options, all the options, or options that you may not have thought about or may not have expected to consider because you just didn't think about it or um, it was thought that uh, that was not a problem when there are problems that, um, that are under the surface, uh, hidden, and you don't know until you start digging around and, and and looking at looking for them, and then based on that, you have options. Like for example, um, you know, should you consider, um, you know, buying technology and owning it in-house, or should you consider uh, using uh, technology through 
uh, software as a service as an option, or uh, should you set up a scanning center for AP, or is there a scanning center in the mailroom that uh, you could leverage easily, um, and so on. So that's one remedy. The other remedy that uh, we think is sort of easy to implement and to revisit is the uh, front end of the invoice process. Optimize the front end as much as possible. This goes without saying that centralization of invoice receipts put, puts AP in control of the process right from the start and using um, digital workflow and systems that drive that workflow could then help you um, be in control of that entire process. And without centralization, without knowing that you have your invoices in your hands, where they are all the time, um, you are really not in control. Um, Scanning and OCR is a must-have these days, uh, especially with the high volume of invoices that still need to be converted from paper or from a PDF into a ERP formatted data. And uh, the technology today in OCR is much, much better than it was even five years ago. Um, I would say that it beats uh, a manual data entry even with the low cost offshore data entry uh, capabilities that you know have been used for the past 10 years. Um, we think today the OCR engines and, and application of that technology is far more efficient, but more, more efficient, more cost effective. And, but above that, you can uh, use the, the processing capability that comes with the OCR engine to pre-validate or to validate the invoice before it even gets into workflow. Uh, implement pre-process verification and validation. This relates to just what, to what I just said, um, being able to um, test the invoice, screen the invoice, before you accept it into workflow, that is a best practice. Uh, why get an invoice into workflow when you can determine that, let's say, it's a, it's a, a duplicate and you received it perhaps yesterday or, or last week. So um, these are some of the, the uh, techniques or capabilities you can, you, can, um, you can apply. Business rules is another one. Um, and, and so on, use business rules to, to um, test, as I was saying, uh, the invoice. Um, in the next slide, I'll just kind of uh, cover that quickly. But uh, Ted, I do see we have a write-in question. Sorry to interrupt. Um, let's see. Is pre-process validation a duplicate workflow? In my experience, software applications seem to have it in their ERP workflow. If I understand the question correctly, um, are we doing it, are we doing the validation uh, and verification two times? Why why is it being done before the invoice enters workflow? No, um, the it's the same validation that's being done pretty much exactly the, the same as you would find in most um, AP workflow engines. Um, the difference is that if you screen the invoices before they get into the workflow, you are eliminating any work for the accounts payable staff during the approval and discrepancy resolution uh, phase. And um, it's, it's a best practice to eliminate invoices that should not be entered into the workflow uh, to begin with. And that's what, it, that's what this workflow does. And because it can be done in the same step technically time-wise, it can be done almost in the same step as the scanning process, as the OCR process, because 
you, you extract the data, and once you have data, now you can match it against anything you want. Uh, you can match it against your receiving system, your PO system, your vendor master, your ERP, what have you, and you can perfect that data. So, for example, if an, you know, if an invoice number um, you know, requires, you know, I don't know, seven digits or a letter plus seven, seven digits, uh, you can test that and so on. So you can do a lot of testing, a lot of screening of an invoice before you accept it. And then once you've accepted it, then you can say, well, this is a good invoice. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to take it to the end. So that's kind of where, um, where that is. Um, so I, I said I wanted to kind of just touch on the invoice conversion process, and, and this is just an illustration, but the point here that I wanted to make is that um, we think that about 90% of the time um, can be saved or workload can be saved in this front end process of an invoice because the technology is so good and accurate these days that um, it, it eliminates a lot of the work, a lot of the manual work, the physical work that a person would have to go through in order to match an invoice to validate um, a PO number or a total on an invoice. And like I said before, it also helps you enrich the data from your existing system. So you may have certain data on the invoice, but given the history with the supplier, you are able to reach into your previous payment history and perhaps enrich this transaction, this invoice, with that additional data. On the other hand, if some of the data is, let's say, imperfect or missing and so on, you could correct it at this stage and then accept the invoice as a perfect data invoice. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about there. I mentioned the uh, pre-process workflow. Uh, the pre-process workflow can be, um, can be customized depending on your, on your workflow. And basically, visually, it sits before the workflow that you already have for, let's say, processing a PO invoice or a non-PO invoice. So in, in the sense, it's Technology-wise, it's pretty much almost the same. It's where you place it and how you use it that's different. And because you're placing up front and you're eliminating a lot of the, um, perhaps the, uh, you know, the, the unqualified or, um, or invalid invoices, you are saving time and money in uh, your uh, process downstream. Um, this slide is meant to just kind of you know, show you where that workflow sits. I understand it may be a little bit hard to read on the screen, but um, as I mentioned, that was, the point was just to show the relationship. So finally, the um, third um, remedy that I wanted to discuss today is the outsourcing of AP activities in a selective way. And what I wanted to show here is a sort of a, a decision tree that you may have seen being used in other situations or with other processes, and that is um, how do you determine when or what do you outsource in AP and what do you keep in-house and, and do it yourself? On the right, uh, you see some of the things that clients like to keep in-house, and on the bottom below the blue bar are some of the activities that they typically outsource. And again, using a decision tree uh, such as this can help you figure that out for your own organization and, um, and put it to you. So that's what I wanted to show uh, there. So we've reached our second poll question for today, and we really would very much like to hear from our audience. And the question for you is, what are your short-term improvement priorities? Is it to improve the invoice intake, receipt to ERP, 
implement workflow for approval and discrepancy, discrepancy resolution, implement better payment systems, reduce errors and cycle time, maximize supplier discounts, or would you say all of the above? If you can take a moment, and we'd like to hear from you and uh, give us an answer uh, to this uh, poll question, it would be greatly appreciated. All right, we'll take them just a second or two more as the uh, responses are being tallied here. Okay, well, um, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what they say. We have about 15 seconds left, but um, depending on what maturity uh, stage they're in, um, they may be uh, focusing on, on one of these things or uh, many. I think the the software kind of forces us to, to select one one choice. Uh, so that's why we have all of the above We're here. We're seeing a majority of 57% all of the above, which is not that surprising in terms of the topic for today's uh, session. Right, it's, it's not uncommon. Uh, managers uh, need to uh, attack from many fronts and, and uh, the uh, invoice intake is, is, is one of them, uh, workflow is another one. Of course, in general, they always want to reduce errors and cycle time. Um, the, the supplier discounts, nobody selected supplier discounts, correct? Yes, zero. So that's interesting. I, we wanted to ask or insert that option because we're hearing about supplier discounts um, out there, but um, we, we're also hearing from talking with clients that that is not a huge priority for them. So with that, I wanted to, um, before we conclude, we, I wanted to share with you a couple of case studies if we have time um, as to, you know, situations that client, that we have seen from, from clients. And um, one cosmetics, uh, large cosmetics company uh, basically came to us and said, you know, we, we have a shared service center in-house, uh, offshore, I forget where. And we have a, a, a workflow engine that we use on a global basis in Europe, uh, Latin America, and here in the U.S. But here in the U.S., we have about 15,000 invoices that are coming in, or 18,000 actually, invoices coming in on paper or in paper via mail. And we just want you to scan it, scan them, and, and just give us the invoices, the images um, indexed. And we'll take it from there. Well, we did that, and the issue was uh, shortly after we started working uh, for them, uh, the issue was, well, about 20% of the invoices you're giving us, we can't seem to get the OCR to read the, uh, the invoice correctly, and it must be your problem. So after going back and forth, um, it was discovered that there were some technical issues in their OCR engine that um, led to rejects for a variety of reasons. Some of them had to do with leading zeros and things like that that required um, some development work um, in that workflow engine in order to, to make it work. So basically what was our fix? Our fix was, well, we are, scanning an, we are scanning the invoice. We can apply the OCR that we have, and let's see what, what, what results we get. Well, once we started doing that and, and started testing it, and within about a month, we were able to get that uh, readability extremely high, where basically they said, you know, let's, let's have you OCR extract the data, apply validation, and enrich the data with data from our systems and just give us that entire data with the invoice. And basically the invoices go straight through to a ready to pay stage, uh, bypassing their own workflow because uh, the data was all valid and in order uh, from our engine. So that's just one example um, of a uh, client situation. Another one, and, and this, this is, um, you know, rather lengthy uh, in terms of words, but 
the, the story here is this is an international uh, bank where they have two or they had two workflows, one for PO, for PO invoices that came in through Ariba and using Ariba workflow, and that was great for that. Uh, but about half of their invoices were um, non-PO invoices that came in through the USPS uh, mail and required um, scanning and conversion. One of their goals was we want, you know, they wanted all the invoices in, in Ariba for, you know, after processing so that uh, they could, um, so that they could use um, one system uh, for their for all their invoices to to house their all their invoices to store to search and so on, but the the challenge was getting the invoices in Ariba and also getting it in getting them in a way that Ariba can apply workflow. Well, that was a somewhat of a challenge. So basically, our solution to them was similar to what we did for the, for the uh, cosmetics company, which is to OCR, extract the data, apply validation, and make it easy, and then export that, and connect straight into, into Ariba, and get that uh, data in there, and um, basically put it through the Ariba workflow downstream, and uh, that fixed the problem uh, nicely. So technology, is necessary in today's um, in today's um, AP process, but reaching the that efficient high performance state is a journey. And what I wanted to show on this slide is basically that that as you improve, you ultimately will get to that optimized state. But we believe that it's sort of a maturity phase that you have to go through, or a maturity life cycle that you go to. Uh, rarely do you go from a manual process, problem-plagued process, to an optimized, high-performance state in one in one easy step, and and not having to go through the through the pain of learning and changing the process and implementing smaller ch uh, steps and improvements as you go. So the takeaways that I like to leave you with are is is, is sort of three. Um, we believe invoice centralization and digitization can be set up, obviously, independent of the approval and discrepancy resolution. So if you may have some sort of a workflow in place, you can always sort of isolate that front end, get it perfected, and then get that data from the um, pre-process uh, scanning and data extraction into workflow. And sometimes you may be able to bypass uh, existing workflow that may be older and may not have the capabilities that you wish you had. You can get that right from the scanning process. Uh, and that is the pre-process validation um, workflow that we talked about. It helps you catch duplicates, to validate suppliers, match PO invoices even do things like check the math and set tolerances on your invoice data so that um, you can really, really screen the invoice and uh, save time. Um, automated invoice conversion and, and data capture, again, um, is a significant benefit. It's fast, um, and, and the benefit of uh, the scanning process and the OCR and so on is really that you can also apply it to any other document uh, process that you have uh, in your organization where you need to uh, receive, convert documents and put them into some sort of a workflow. Uh, so you can use the technology, the people, the facilities uh, for many, many um, applications. So how can we help? Well, as I mentioned before at the beginning, we are a service provider, and one of our services is accounts payable. So we provide everything from that invoice centralization and digitization up front to invoice uh, and t and &E processing um, with uh, assistance in your payment process if, if needed, and of course uh, also providing the AP administrative support 
On the back end, things like help desk services, reconciliation, analysis, reporting um, that uh, is typically needed. So with that, I think, Anne-Marie, I'm at so, the end of my slide. So that concludes today's session. I see that we're right on time here. Uh, we hope you found today's insights helpful. If you do have any questions uh, for Ted, we, or we would like to hear from you. Um, we have experience helping other companies cut costs, reduce invoice cycle times, and advance AP performance. So please feel free to reach out to us and uh, start the conversation. And we hope you enjoyed today's session. Thank you so very much. Have a wonderful afternoon.